Hey, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Travis Johnson, here to you today to provide you with nine things you can do in order to be a great guest. First off, we're going to talk a little bit about what the heck, why be a guest? There's more than 500 million blogs, 850,000 active podcasts, 30,000 radio stations, 1,200 newspapers, 7,300 magazines, and 6,000 digital magazines. What do they have in common? Well, they all need content, and many of them rely on interviews to create content. So why not you? I did an interview with Lori McNeil, and she talks about all the best things you can do to get booked on media. Check out my interview with Lori McNeil at nonprofitarchitect.org slash blog. The first thing you need to do to make sure you're a great guest is do your research. What does that mean? That might mean listening to the host, listening to a couple of interviews, reading a few articles, whatever you're going to be a guest at, especially in podcasting, you got to make sure you know what the heck the guest host is talking about. If you haven't listened to a couple of episodes, you don't really understand the rhythm. You're not sure how the host is going to interact. You don't know if they normally step on their guests or they let them speak fully. Understanding that dynamic and how to play into that really makes a big difference. Number two, you need to make sure you test your gear, whether it's your microphone, your headset, your Zoom settings. Make sure you go ahead and test all the gear that you have to be successful for the interview. Definitely recommend headphones. That prevents feedback and other extraneous noise if you don't have one. Uh, you can go pick up some headphones. Microphone, recommend a dynamic mic for most guest speakers. You can get one between 30 and 60 bucks. The dynamic microphone picks up directionally. It's very great. The condenser microphones tend to pick up all the noises in a room. So if you've got a fan on, if you got something humming in the background, it's going to pick that up. Also, make sure you're not fidgeting. If you're going to use a pen to take notes, Make sure the point is already out on the pen. You're not clicking it so they don't hear the sound in the background. Make sure you're not drumming your fingers, fidgeting with things. Make sure you're not making any extra noise if you can handle it. Tip number three, know their audience. Know who their fans are. You need to understand who really you're going to be speaking to. You know, as a podcaster, I speak to startup nonprofits. I know who my fans are and what they need to be successful. I bring on guests that are going to have value for my fans. And as a host, I try to relate whatever my guests are saying to my fans through examples and stories and whatnot. But really understanding who their audience is is going to make sure that you can deliver your message. Tip number four is to be a storyteller. Yeah, you can run someone through a list. You can run them through the reasons why. But if you can take that and relate it to a story in real life, you're going to be much more successful. Things you might be prepared with is a lighthearted story, a love story, a serious story, maybe your origin story, and really explaining the why behind what you do is going to help their audience connect to you as the guest much better. If you're in the business world, you're going to have client success stories along with personal business stories. I love when my guests share some kind of disaster story, when they did something and it just went poorly and things were coming off the rails. Why do I think it's important to share? A, it makes you more relatable as a guest. B, it says that if you're running a business and you had an event that sucked and was terrible, that you made it through, you are now more better prepared to help them with their event or what other type of thing that they're doing. Definitely want to be a storyteller as a guest. Number five, you want to ensure that you are providing value. Now, about half of my guests provide a free downloadable something or other, whatever's in their zone of genius. Maybe it's business related or whatnot. Sometimes they provide it as a link so they can then collect emails on their side. But you also want to make sure that you're providing the podcast host some value. You want to make sure you're sharing the interview when it comes out. You want to rate and review their show. And you definitely want to make sure that you are meeting their audience. If you're a coach, you might provide a five-minute morning routine. If you're a chef, you might provide two of your best recipes. Whatever that is, figure out how you can really provide value. Pro tip, if I'm a guest, I record. 
I make sure I set it up with the host. I record my side independently and I send them the recording. That way, if there's some, some kind of technical issue or their internet fuzzed out, they would have another recording to then build off of if there's a bad connection. Tip number six, you really want to nail your message. You want to go on there and sound practiced and confident. You have to understand what your core message is. What's the one thing you want people to get from your interview? And you want to have a call to action. When I'm a guest, depending on the topic, I might have them download my free PDF that teaches them how to generate recurring monthly donations if I'm speaking to nonprofits. If I'm speaking about podcasting, I'm going to offer them the free 15 reasons I think everyone needs their own podcast. For my personal setup, I have some command hooks on the back of my laptop that hold a three by five note card that has my three points that I want to make, my call to action, and I remember to look at the camera. Very important when making video podcasting or doing an interview of any kind. Uh, number seven, no filler, all killer. Filler words hurt your message. The more ahs and ums and likes and reallys and whatever that filler word is distracts from your message, whatever you're trying to say. I did a, an interview with Lewis Cheney from Get to the Damn Point. Very hilarious interview, but he talks about an interview he heard. He was in news media for a long time and getting good stories on the air is just something they fall in love with every day if they get the chance to. He heard a nonprofit have six minutes of airtime on a newscast, which is an amazing amount of unheard time, right? It's unheard of. In the interview, the guest used ahs and ums and filled up more than 30 seconds for the interview. He details how that can hurt you, and he actually plays it on a TEDx talk, and it's one of the most painful things that I've ever heard. Make, if you understand your message and you can speak to the point, understand that dead air is a good thing. It shouldn't have to be filled with engaging your vocal cords with annoying uh, while you're trying to figure out what to engage your brain with. Uh, number eight, other prep that you can do to help prepare the space. I love my dogs, but they alert everyone to someone in the cul-de-sac. So I close my blinds, I crack the back door, let them get in, a, in and out if they have to. And I mute myself while I'm not talking to help prevent background noise in just in case it happens to pick up. But all that being said, you can still have Amazon or UPS or the Postal Service show up to your house unexpectedly and create that back noise. Definitely work with the host to figure out what you're going to do in case something happens. As a host, I usually say, hey, that's great. We, we picked up some background noise. I'm going to ask the question again, and then they'll take care of that in editing to get that out of there. You know, I make sure my kiddos and significant other are in another room. I have door hangers that say recording in progress. So right now my door is shut on the other side. It's a door hanger that if the door is shut, people understand that I'm in here recording. Make sure you're hydrated. Have a glass of water on hand if necessary. You should go without saying, use the facilities before the interview. Make sure you turn off your phone, your computer notifications. And here's another one recently I came across. Those of you having a ring, the little camera outside the front door, the associated chime that's in the house can also be an unmitigated distraction. Make sure the ring noise is changed or off during your meeting if you can get away with it. Uh, be punctual. Being on time is huge for a podcast host. Sometimes we have episodes stacked up back to back to back to back to back. And if someone's late, that can throw off the whole day. If you're going to be late or you have to miss it, communicate with the host. Send them an email, shoot them a text that, hey, something came up. I can't make it. Please use your backup time. If you're a host, I always have things that I'm, I have on tap to do or accomplish in case something happens. I like to do a pre-interview, but sometimes those get missed. Sometimes those have to get rescheduled, but I always have something else I'm going to accomplish in case that falls through. Definitely want to respect the host time and be on time. Make sure you use the host's name throughout the interview and view your conversation as a casual meetup rather than a job interview. If you're too stiff and robotic, it's not going to be a good interview. Uh, tip number nine, be gracious. Things are going to happen, both as a guest and as a host. Things that are unplanned for, someone just shows up at your house, 
you know, some emergency happens, that stuff happens all the time. That's life, especially in a COVID world. People understand that there might be someone walking in the background or the kids run in to say something. Don't get angry. Just say, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Or my friend's great advice. If the dog barks in the background, the host says, oh, hey, what's the dog's name? And then they go on a tangent talking about the dog for a few minutes. But that's our nine tips to help you be a better guest. Here they are again. Research the show test your gear, know their audience, be a storyteller, have these stories on tap, make sure you provide value, know your message, dispense with the filler words of the ahs and ums, make sure the space is prepared for a great outstanding interview and have a little grace. I need my healthy fair share of grace from time to time and I expect to give other people grace as well. Thank you so much for listening to another great episode and I'm your host. Travis Johnson.